Cooler. Hey, big smile. <laughs> big smile. Fair enough as well. I mean, the medal count uh, means that Britain have done better than Qatar two years ago, which was better than Leon two years before that. Um, I know sport, this sport represents a lot more than just the medals won. Um, but as an indicator, things are on the up and up, aren't they? Yeah, it's been a, an absolute brilliant game. Um, the athletes have all turned up and performed um, wonderfully. Um, the staff have been great. Um, it has actually just been a bit of a dream. Um, and as you say, um, we know we keep surpassing these targets, which is really, really exciting. But it's a, it's a, just a big accolade to all the athletes in their terms of how they prepared and got themselves ready for these games. So you really big hats off to them. Can you breathe a little bit now? I mean, with all the pressure that comes from a, a, you know, being a head coach at a, a world, a home world championships, can you breathe? Um, I probably breathe after the last session. So the, we've been having daily meetings and we've always said we focus on one day at a time. That's just been my motto, one day at a time. We don't give anybody medals before they've actually been on the track. Um, you don't ever, you know, um, disrespect your um, competitors, you know, because you're number one, it doesn't mean somebody else can't come there and surpass you. So we keep focusing, the coach were really focused, the athletes were really focusing on what they needed to do. Um, so I probably relaxed for seven o'clock tonight. A glass of champagne, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> there, I mean, I've read that this year's games were, you know, they sell 280,000 tickets, more than all of the eight previous World Championships combined. Um, talk a little bit about the support the team's experienced throughout the two or oh, ten days. It's been absolutely awesome. That's a word my son uses, but it actually has been awesome. Um, the, the crowds have just been fantastic. They've just cheered, and it, and you can't you can't imagine even with even if it's like ten thousand people, which is huge for us. The noise they made for the British athletes have been brilliant, um, and in some days it's been up to thirty five thousand. Um, and you know, if somebody had told me that a para-athletics um, standalone competition outside of a Paralympic Games would get those crowds, I, I wouldn't have believed them. So, I mean, the British, the British public have just been amazing. And, um, you know, I can't thank them enough, and I know the athletes can't thank them enough. It, they've just actually done us proud. There's, there's a bit of a clamour for this to be held in 2019 <laughs> in the same venue. And 2021, some have suggested. What are your thoughts on all of that? Do you know, as a head coach, I would love to come back here in 2019. Um, that home crowd, that home support, you just can't beat it. And you're guaranteed, you know, you're guaranteed people coming out to support the athletes, not just the British athletes, all the athletes who have, have trained really, really hard. And it's just really nice recognition for them to get a crowd to come and see them perform. So if it came back in 2019, I would be a very happy person. Um, the China, the US, They've you know, maintained consistency where their standards are concerned, as as Team GB. Um, what would you like to see done around the rest of the world in, in order to improve standards from the bottom up? And, yeah, and I think that's really important. It's like, you know, we don't want to all the big nations dominating. And it's nice, I checked the medal count this morning, and 64 countries have won medals, which is really good. Mm. It shows that, you know, it's actually now being um, recognised as a, a global sport. Um, and I think it's just more of what we're doing now, more um, the visibility of the sport, you know, getting it in the media so that, you know, remote countries that may not even know about disability athletics have the opportunity to see it. So, so for me, it's yeah, we still need to develop, but we're, we're probably in a really good place. Um, and it's no doubt to me, um, in my mind, that you know, of all the Paralympic sports, we are probably the most global of all the sports. And you know, it doesn't matter, you don't need a lot of equipment, you know, you can run, you can jump, and you know, you can throw, and um, you don't need uh, specialized equipment, you know, if you're not in a wheelchair and so forth. So, um, no, it, I think globally it's in a really positive place, but obviously it's still got work to do. That sound, leads me on to my next question, because coupled with the success of last year um, at the Olympics and now this year, you'd be forgiven for, you know, resting on your laurels and suggesting that the model works. You know, we're improving uh, incrementally. Uh, we've got the formula, we know what we're doing, but I guess you're not that type of person. Where can we improve? Where are the chinks in the armoury? No, you can never rest on your laurels. Um, you know, this sport evolves very quickly. And I think as soon as you get complacent, then that's when your issues start. So we, we every year we do an annual um, getaway, get to, um, to team, team getaway to discuss all the aspects of the programme, right from our talent ID and our recruitment and retention. Um, I still think we've got a lot of untapped talent in this country. 
Um, you know, when it comes to black and minority, minor, ethnic minor, obviously we don't have a great deal. So one of our projects is going to be in London where we're going to try and encourage the athletes of colour to come and take part in para-athletics. Um, so, and, you know, so we are, we're not resting our laurels. We know we've got athletes that don't even know that they've got a disability and they could be in schools um, it could be a neighbour. So for us, having these championships, it just increases the visibility. So hopefully somebody may say to their neighbour, to their son or realise they've got a cousin, you know, actually, have you decided to try this sport? Because, you know, we, we, we need more people in it. So even though it's a successful pro um, programme and it's got a really robust um, talent pathway, you know, we need more. Um, my last question then, or... Oh. Not really a question or statement. There was a lot of love shown for you personally on social networking, um, particularly by Georgie. Um, I, I thought that was quite touching of her to, to kind of highlight your contribution to helping her be the best that she can be. Um, that must make you feel particularly particularly happy inside, warm and fuzzy. Well, at first of all, I was actually really embarrassed that she'd done that because I like to keep under the radar, um, you know, because it's not about me. It's really about the athletes because, you know, they're on the stage. Um, but it's nice that she, you know, she actually decided to say, you know, what we do because, you know, ultimately, you know, if you get a happy person, um, and for her, a happy mummy, um, then she's a better athlete. So, you know, that's what the job of, you know, not just me, but the team is to make sure that we, we take any stresses off the athlete and things that we can manage and, and, you know, put in place that we do it so that they can just go and run, jump, throw, free of any issues. So, so it was very nice of her, but slightly embarrassing. Listen, I, I had to mention it because I think it's a fine balance between cracking the whip in your position and an arm around the shoulder. So well done for finding that balance and achieving in the way that you've done. Congratulations on all the success. Oh, enjoy you. tonight <laughs> and glad, enjoy that glass of champagne and I'll be speaking to you for the next three or four years. God willing. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you.